What's going on guys? I hope you're having a great day out there. Today we're going to work on the new Team Corrali Spark a little bit. Had that for its first bash down at the skate park. She performed awesome. Um, as I was talking in that video, I wanted to make a few changes to this thing. Um, number one being the suspension. And last night I was messing around with the, uh, the other springs that came with the car. And I did find out a little bit of information. Now, I don't know if you can tell on video or not, because it's kind of hard, but the springs that they send and added with the car are a heavier spring. Um, the, the ones that are on here are kind of a medium, more of a track, uh, medium-duty spring, and these ones that they send with the car are a heavy-duty spring. I put those on last night, and the suspension feels really good. Now, I was going to change out the fluid. However, once I got the springs on there, um, the fluid actually feels pretty decent. It's nice and smooth. It's not... It has a good feel to it. It just felt like the springs were a little too much on the soft side, obviously. So I left the fluid alone and just changed the springs. Now, I did have to obviously change the spring uh, tension ring on here. I know there's another word for that, but I forgot at the moment. Because any of you guys have seen the first video with this, the rings were down really far with the springs that were on here, with the medium springs. So I wound them up quite considerable. I only left probably about barely a half an inch at the top, um, and it felt pretty good. It had a nice feel to it. It definitely brought the height up a tiny bit. It doesn't have as much sag now, and I think she'll take those heavier jumps a lot better. I did the same thing on the front and the rear. I did bring the rear wing rings up a tiny bit, uh, but not very much. The rear were actually pretty good where that was set at. It just needed the heavier spring in there, but she got a real nice feel to the suspension now, so I'm curious to see how she takes those heavier landings. So now that I got the suspension kind of in a good spot, um, like I said, we're going to take us out for another bash, see how she feels. I might end up thickening up the fluid a tiny bit, but right now, on the bench at least, and some drops, it looks pretty good. The next thing we're going to work on is the center differential fluid and maybe some gearing, because I do want to thicken up um, from the feel of it in the air. The air control is great, but I feel like I need to kind of distribute that power a little more evenly, so I'm going to thicken up the fluid in the center diff, we're going to check out the gearing on here. I honestly don't know what gear is in here. I'm going to see if I got something that's maybe, you know, like two teeth bigger and gear this thing up a tiny bit because she definitely got the power to pull it. We're going to go ahead and remove the center brace out of here so I can get to the center disc. Get these pulled out. Get to the center and uh, check out that fluid. I'm not sure what fluid is in the middle of this right now, but uh, plan on thickening it up just a little bit and I just dropped the screw. But yeah, to pull the brace out, there's two screws in the front, two in the back, and two here. This little plastic piece comes off, and the tower-to-tower -to -tower brace um, pops right out. And then we got four more screws right here in order to get the diff out, and there's two screws right here that'll pull the cover off so I can see what pinion's in here. All right, we'll go ahead. These are moved out of here. the first time pulling the center diff out of this thing, obviously. Never had this apart yet looks like there is two long screws and then two short ones in the back we're gonna go ahead and get this pulled out of here and i'll show you what we got so it turns out you don't have to pull this you pull those four out these two out ones and these two the whole piece comes off as the cover and the first half of the diff you can leave those two screws in if you're pulling the diff out that is but then there's another little plastic little shim in here i gotta get that out of there it's it's a little tight i'm gonna get that out and we'll get the center diff out so this is a little different, you know, like on uh, you know, like on the armors and stuff, the pieces come down. This one's actually retained on the rear part on the gear side. It's actually part of it, and it slides off. So it actually captures on your bearing. It's kind of a different, neat design, but um, we got the center diff out here. Let me go ahead and pop this thing open, see what kind of fluid we got in here. I mean, feeling it right now, it is extremely a very thin fluid, I can tell you that right now. I'm usually going to run somewhere around... I don't know, maybe a 250 half million in here, somewhere in that area is what I usually like to run. I a lot of times put earplugs in them, but on the buggies, I tend to like, you know, like that half a million area just because the buggies are a little different ammo, especially if you're doing ramp launches. They seem to stay in track straighter without a fully locked up diff, at least in my experience, might be my imagination, but that's how I run it. So if I just counted that pinion correctly, it looks like there's a 13 tooth on here. So I want to go up to like maybe like a 15 on here. I don't want to go crazy right now, but I would like to get a little bit more gearing out of it and a tiny bit more wheel speed. So I'm going to see if I can find a 15 tooth for that. But let's go ahead and get the center diff opened up and check it out. 
I'm not gonna bore you with the whole process here, but we're gonna go ahead and open this thing up. See what she's got. Now these are an aluminum case versus like arm and stuff like that that are plastic. These are aluminum, which is really nice. And uh, you know, less chances of them melting down and having problems. So definitely a nice little upgrade and touch they do to the Corrali differentials. Well guys, I've had a change of mind. Um, I had a little issue getting the rear diff apart. Um, there is Loctite in here and it's, uh, <laughs> it's not coming out. Try to drill a screw off to get in here and it's caused nothing but issues here. So with that being said, I'm going to have to change this out at some point, but for now I'm going to put a little bit of earplug in here. I'm not going to pack it, um, but two benefits to that. Um, number one, I can stiffen a diff up still and number two, you're not as concerned with fluid leaking out because you're not going to leak a uh, silicone earplug. So that's the route we're going to go. And then I got to order another one of these center pieces here because the screw is not coming out and it's kind of is what it is. I've been trying to grab a hold of it with lots of different things and not having any luck. So that's the route we're going to go. Well, unfortunately, it was the route that I wasn't really trying to go. Um, however, these are what I use. I just see silicone earplugs. I get them off of Amazon. I used about... Uh, about half of one. I just jammed it in there. I didn't want to completely stiffen it up like I usually do on them, but it'll tighten it up quite a bit and should just distribute the power equally to front and rear wheels. I'll see how I like it. If I don't like it, then I will get the new case and just change this out and put like the half a million in there, but we'll see how she goes. Just so y'all know, after I kind of put it back together and felt it, I didn't like it, so I put in a rest of the earplug. So I got one whole earplug in here. Um, she's pretty stiff, but not fully locked up. So I think I'll feel good. We'll see how it works. Well, I was just poking around my gear case here, and I found a 15 tooth. I don't know if you can read that, but well, actually it's on that side right there. So we're gonna try this one out in there. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the motor out. We're gonna change the gear out. And uh, see how I like a 15 tooth on here. One other small thing that I just noticed, honestly, that I like the Corrali did was they actually put a proper screw and not those goofy pan head or little, you know, two and a half millimeter that they actually used a three millimeter head screw here with a washer, like the modification we do to all the Armas. Um, they come stock like that to hold the motor in place, which is great. Now, if I had to say something negative, it's going to be they got to chill with the Loctite a little bit. There's a little too much in too many places. All right, we got our 15 tooth on here now. I dropped the center diff back in here and I'm gonna go ahead and set my mesh. But uh, so far everything fit up good. The new pinion fit on here nicely. So I think I'm gonna like it with a 15. It's gonna give that extra little bit of snap that it needs, the extra little bit of wheel speed and locking up or almost locking up the center diff will definitely distribute that power a lot better. It'll put the power to the front and rear wheels equally um, and kind of help it with the air control and I keep that thing planted, so we'll see how she goes. All right, I got my mess set, feels good. Got that nice, that nice tiny little rocking. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but she feels good. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the cover back on, get the center diff bolted back up again. And um, can't wait to take this thing back out and give it another rip. Unfortunately, we got some nasty weather over the next couple of days. It's gonna be nothing but pouring down rain. So kind of doing a little bit of work on this thing and making some changes to it. And I uh, should be ready for the next bash. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing screwed back together again. Almost. Now, I don't wind them all the way down, obviously. Get them to where they're just starting to touch and then go over all this by hand. You don't want to strip out the heads or strip out the threads. Well, guys, as far as disassembly and doing normal day-to-day -day stuff like pulling discs and pinions and motors and stuff like that, from what I've, you know, messed around with, pulled apart so so far on this thing, um, you know, the teardowns have been pretty easy. Um Hasn't been, uh, hasn't been anything that was like frustrating or irritating to deal with. So that's definitely a plus uh, as we continue to work on it. And I'm sure at some point we'll break stuff on it. Um, we'll figure out more on what it's like to tear it down. But uh, so far, so good. Okay, well, so far now we have upgraded the shocks a little bit. We put the heavier springs on here. Uh, haven't changed the fluid. We now are running a 15 tooth pinion instead of the 13 that was in here. I'm pretty sure it was a 13. I should recount that, but... Um, I went to a 15 tooth pinion now on this and we have put silicone earplugs in the center diff and that might change. I might go to like a half a million or something like that at some point, but I'm going to see how I like it and how she drives tracks and all that stuff. Um, I've done it to my other cars. You know, as you guys know, many of my other cars all have the center diff locked up and honestly, they're fine. I don't really have any issues. For some reason with the buggies and like with my techno, I've left it where I didn't lock it up fully, but 
you know, very close. You know, I was going a half million, a million weight fluid in there. And, you know, I was kind of running that. So we're going to try and see how I like it on this and uh, how she tracks. And also, guys, these tires, I think I'm honestly going to buy a set of these tires for my other, for my Typhon 6S and have another set of those. Because, honestly, I'm really digging these tires. These things hook up great on the pavement. They seem to work really great in the grass and in the dirt yesterday, ripping around the skate park uh, down there in the field. So they seem like they're a really great tire for kind of all around. So I'm going to pick up an extra set of these just to have on hand and have on my other buggy. Now, as this car continues to be out there, um, I'm sure there'll be lots of upgrades coming along for this thing, um, you know, with differential cases. And as you guys know, you know, probably that'll be one of the major first upgrades I do to this car once somebody makes one are the aluminum diff cases because I don't know. I can't speak um, on this car yet to know if these ones flex at all or going to twist um, like the Armas where you start skipping and losing uh, your diff teeth because of the, the plastic flexing in there. Um, the, the, the aluminum gearboxes are pretty much a must-do on all the armor cars. But time will tell to see how they hold up on here. But if they do make an aluminum version, I always kind of like them because on heavy crashes and stuff like that, they also save because a lot of times your diff cases will get ripped out. The screws will rip out of them like I have a lot on the 8S cars. But we'll see how that goes. And I'm starting to see a lot of parts show up for this thing already out there. Um, in different places, obviously on the Corrali site and um, even on places like eBay and stuff, I'm seeing, you know, more and more and a few upgrades starting to pop up for this. So I'm definitely excited to see what the future holds for this car. Definitely a great buggy. Really nice to know. One other thing I wanted to show you, because a lot of people were asking in the comments, so we're going to do a little side-by-side -side between this and the Typhoon, because people were thinking that they were, this was either smaller or different sizes. So I'm going to show you that. Now, obviously, here on the right, we have the Typhoon. Over here, we have the Spark. And we're doing wheel to wheel. Now, obviously, I have this giant bumper on the front of my Typhon. But if you go there and with wheels, they are exactly the same length. Now, here's where it gets interesting because the width is actually wider. Um, the spark from wheel to wheel is exactly, well, pretty much a foot um, right there. Yeah, a foot. The Typhon is a foot and a half. However, the Typhon has plus I'm, it's either plus 0.5s or plus one wheel um, hex extenders on here. So if you took those off, technically the spark would be wider than the Typhon stock because I do have the widened uh, axles down here, as you guys can see. And I'm pretty sure these are the plus ones on here, but don't 100% quote me on that. But uh, yeah, she's definitely got a nice width stock, and they're exactly the same length, as you guys can see. So... You know, as far as platform size, you're looking at about the same, except I think the Spark does have a little bit on the width, but uh, both, you know, really fun cars. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. I wanted to get a few things done on this car and get a few things changed from the last bash that I know I wanted to do, like the gearing, uh, stiffen up the shocks a little bit. And, you know, I was thinking about a little after the bash was like, I think I want to stiffen up that center differential to kind of equally distribute that pile a little more. So we're going to see how she rolls here. She definitely be a little faster. She should take those jumps a lot better. And I'm excited to take this thing out for this next bash. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. But that's going to do it for today. So until next time, y'all be safe. Be careful out there. Peace out, everybody.